Welcome to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a drama film from 2017. Titled Gifted. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Frank Adler is telling his niece, Mary, to get ready for school. He tells her that he is making her a special breakfast. Mary is reluctant and brings up excuses, like who will look after her monocular cat, Fred. Frank tells her that Fred will be alright. She asks for the special breakfast she was told about and Frank just shows her a box of Kellogg's cereal with special written on it. To her dismay, Frank sees her off at the bus stand, where Mary proceeds to go to school for the first time. Roberta, who is Frank's neighbor, follows him back to his house. She expresses her concern regarding Mary attending school. She thinks something may happen to her. Frank looks nervous. Later, Mary is at school and looks like she'd rather be anywhere but here. Her teacher, Bonnie, wanders around the class asking the children simple math problems. Mary looks at her and the rest of the class with disdain as she thinks Bonnie's questions are simple. Teacher starts asking Mary comparatively complex questions. Mary answers them easily as the questions get more difficult, particularly when reaching multiplication. Mary hesitates for a bit, which Bonnie takes as her cue to stop. After a few moments of silence, Mary answers the multiplication question correctly. Bonnie grabs the calculator to check. It's correct. She feels perplexed and knows that Mary isn't just a regular kid. The principal, Miss Davis is introduced to the first graders. The class treats her with respect. Mary behaves rather casually and yells at Davis and Bonnie to call Frank and tell him to get her out of here. Later that day, Frank shows up to pick up Mary. Bonnie has a word with him. She tries to make him realize that Mary isn't an ordinary child. Frank waves her off, telling her it's just the Jackow Trachtenberg method which Mary used to calculate the math questions which Bonnie asked in class. Bonnie says Mary is only seven, to which Frank responds that he learned the same method when he was eight, meaning it isn't a big deal. Bonnie later searches up the Jackow Trachtenberg method and looks into it, feeling quite impressed. Frank is working on a boat. Mary asks him if they can take the boat for a test drive. They spend time together at the beach. They converse about different things, and Frank tells Mary that her mother would want her to make friends. Mary brings Fred to school and shows him to her classmates. She tells them he has only one eye. The kids ask her, how did he lose his eye? Mary responds saying, she doesn't know about that because she found him like this in the trash and in a way, rescued him. Bonnie grows closer to Mary. She hands her additional homework, knowing she'd finish her work quicker than most students. Mary smiles at Bonnie and Bonnie returns her smile with an affectionate one of her own. They bond well in class. Bonnie searches more about the Adler family, first looking into Frank Adler's details, but her search does not yield any fruitful results. She ends up reading about Frank's sister Diane Adler. Diane is a child prodigy, excellent at mathematics. Mitt professor, Seymour Shankland, calls her exceptional, saying she has an exquisite mind, a mind that could help the world. As Bonnie reads further, she finds out that Diane ended, herself age 27. She left behind a daughter named Mary with her brother, Frank. Bonnie shows up to meet Frank at their local bar, Ferg. Frank opens up to her. He tells her that he was running late for a date when Diane showed up unannounced at his place with a baby Mary. She told Frank she needed to talk to him. Frank dismissed her saying he'll listen to her when he's back from his date. That night, when he returned home he found Mary on the couch and Diane on the bathroom floor. Though it isn't entirely his fault, he still thinks he should have known. Bonnie asks about any other family members. Frank replies that Mary's biological father didn't last. A month, he abandoned Diane. His mother is very strict. She is an uncompromising woman, British through and through. Mary is on the bus to school. She notices her classmate climbing the bus, holding a well-made project. She feels concerned at first, thinking that her project isn't good enough. A little boy is trying to make his way. A 12-year-old bullies him, making the poor boy trip and break his work. The bully along with the rest of the kids start laughing and teasing him. Mary comes to his rescue and tells the kids to stop it. She hits the bully in the face with a book. Frank is later walking into Mary's school as he passes by the bully, who is bleeding from his nose. He immediately checks up on Mary, making sure that she's alright. The principal, Davis, makes Frank understand that beating people up isn't allowed. Frank tells her that he'll make sure Mary understands that. Though he is proud of her for standing up to a bully, principal says she would like to have Mary study at the Oaks Academy for Gifted Education where she can be educated at a level that matches her capabilities. Frank brings up financial concerns. She guarantees a full-ride scholarship for Mary. Frank turns the offer down, saying that Mary should be treated like a normal kid and sent to a regular school. 
Bonnie asks him if he is sure about his decision, to which he says he doesn't know. Mary apologizes to her classmates for her behavior. She and the rest of the class applaud Justin, the little boy who is her classmate, telling him that his zoo was the best art project. Frank and Mary reach home to find her grandmother, Evelyn waiting at their doorstep. Evelyn brings her a fancy laptop with a book about advanced algebra by Charles Zimmer. Mary tells her with disinterest that she has already read the book and is now covering differential equations. Frank makes her thank Evelyn. Evelyn is not satisfied with Frank's living conditions and calls him out for it. Frank and Evelyn meet for lunch. She says she is concerned for Mary and wants her to live in a better environment. She warns Frank that authorities will be involved. Frank tells her that Diane would not want her to have custody of Mary. Evelyn calls, Mary's mother Diane and Frank weak. She subtly tells him that this matter is going to court. Frank and Mary hang out together. She asks him questions about God and faith. He says he has his own opinion, which could be wrong, so he does not have the right to spoil. Her opinion, Mary mentions Roberta. He says that Roberta has faith and she loves her very much. He tells her that he knows that everyone will end up together and that's what matters in the end. Roberta proves that she cares deeply for them by appearing in court to assist Frank in obtaining custody of Mary against his mother. It becomes clear that Evelyn plans to take Mary with her to Massachusetts. Frank wants her to stay with him. Later, Frank asks Roberta to watch Mary for the night. Roberta agrees, mentioning that she is just a neighbor and not a blood relative or someone whose opinion would be valued but she loves Mary very much. Mary spends the night at Roberta's, singing with her and having a great time. Bonnie and Frank meet at the bar. She explains to him that it was not her who leaked the information. To Davis, they get closer over drinks and have interesting conversations. Bonnie tells him that she cannot afford to be intimate with him, but eventually they spend the night together. Mary is searching for a DVD at Frank's place. She finds Bonnie sneaking out of Frank's room and gets cheeky about it. Frank finds out about this and gets frustrated saying he can't have his own life for even some time. She gets upset and leaves. Later, Frank apologizes to Mary and they reconcile. Roberta is slamming Frank for his irresponsible behavior. As he checks his mail outside and finds out that Mary is going to be spending two days in Boston with her grandmother. When Mary visits Boston with her grandmother, she sees family photos, including pictures of her mother and grandmother when she was young. Back in Florida, Bonnie and Frank become even closer. Evelyn takes Mary to university and tells her about the seven millennium problems. Mary is shown a picture of Grigory Perelman who worked on the Poincare conjecture. Evelyn reminisces how Diane could have also been honored and had her picture up on the wall if she had finished solving the Navier-Stokes equation. Mary expresses her wish to be featured on the wall someday as well. She is handed a difficult equation to solve by Professor Shankland. After noticing that she is unable to solve it for quite some time, he tells Evelyn maybe Mary isn't that capable after all. Evelyn is walking furiously with her, regretting coming to Shankland in the first place when Mary tells her that the equation was wrong and hence unsolvable. They head back to Shankland and the equation is corrected by Mary. She solves it till the end, leaving Shankland feeling overwhelmed. When they are back home, Mary tells Frank that although Evelyn is nice, she does not want to live with her. He promises her that she will not go anywhere. Mary meets a social worker who asks her different questions about her life. Mary mentions watching Ultimate Fighting with Frank. She also tells her that he promised to keep her around and that he's a good guy. Pat asks her why she thinks that to which she responds that Frank wanted her since the beginning, irrespective of her smartness. Mary's biological father is brought to court. He wants Evelyn to have Mary's custody. Mary's father is embarrassed by Frank's attorney, who makes him realize that he doesn't even know his daughter's middle name and he has never seen her in real life. Frank wins this round in court. He walks her to her car. She tells him that she doesn't like being at odds with her son. Frank says they've always been at odds. Mary locks herself and cries hysterically because her deadbeat father does not come to see her while he is in town. Later Frank drives to the hospital with Mary and Roberta. They wait together for the birth of a baby boy. Frank tells Mary that she was born just like this and that everyone was ecstatic about her birth. He tells her that he broke the news of Mary's birth to everyone. Mary celebrates happily with the families in the hospital. Later, when Evelyn testifies in court, Frank's attorney notices her reference towards baseball. He and Evelyn engage in a heated discussion regarding Diane never being allowed to do anything except for studying mathematics. She never played sports or lived a normal life. Frank's attorney mentions Paul, Diane's first love at 17. Paul and Diane ran away to a resort in Vermont for skiing. He antagonizes Evelyn for filing a lawsuit against him, 
pressing, kidnapping charges and making Diane distraught leading to her attempted self-killing in 1999. Evelyn insists that it was nothing major and that she tried her best to be a good mother to Diane. Frank testifies and says he is a freelancer. He repairs boats. Evelyn's attorney brings up concerns regarding Mary's health care, education, and life. Frank insists that he wants her to live like a normal kid. The attorney also brings up how Mary assaulted the kid bully in school and how he once assaulted a man. Frank says it was self-defense against a drunk man in a bar and admits spending a night in jail because of the incident. Later that evening, Frank's attorney suggests handing Mary over to a foster family temporarily. When she turns 12, she can make a decision in court regarding her living situation. The foster family resides in Tampa. Frank can visit her easily as it's only 30 minutes away. Evelyn would get visiting rights too. Feeling out of options, he sends Mary off to live in Tampa. She doesn't take it easy, she cries and begs Frank not to leave her alone, reminding him that he promised he wouldn't leave her. Roberta and Frank grieve over Mary's absence. Later, Frank tells Bonnie that he thought about handing Mary over to child services many times but could never let her go. He blames himself for the mess. He tries to visit Mary but is told by the foster father that she doesn't want to see him. Frank is heartbroken. Roberta comforts him. Bonnie notices a poster of adoptable pets with Fred's picture on it. She sends it to Frank who frantically drives over to animal services and manages to save Fred along with two other cats. Evelyn is the one who put Fred up for adoption in the first place. Frank and Roberta rush to visit Mary and succeed in getting her back when Frank shows. Evelyn the documents proving that Diane did in fact finish the proof for the Navier Stokes equation. He tells Evelyn that Diane wanted this to be published after her mother's death, meaning Evelyn did suppress Diane's wishes. Frank and Mary end up reconciling and are more than happy to be together as they drive off with Roberta. Evelyn looks at the tear-stained notes with doodles sketched on them and starts crying. She calls Mitt and gets in contact with Shankland. Mary attends university, after which Frank picks her up. They talk in the car. He hands her a book by Renée Descartes about existence. She jokes with him about it. Frank drops her off at the park where she joins other girl scouts and plays with them happily. Frank smiles warmly in the distance at Bonnie. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.